Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In this video, we delve into the thought-provoking insights shared by Lynette Tsang in a video discussing the impending hyperinflationary reset and the potential impact of central bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Lynette Tsang is a renowned financial expert known for her extensive knowledge of the global economy and the precious metals market. Her analysis sheds light on the complexities of modern monetary systems, debt creation, and the possible scenarios that may unfold as CBDCs become the new currency. Lynette Zhang emphasizes the inevitability of a hyperinflationary reset, especially if CBDCs are to become the new dominant currency. To comprehend this, we must first understand how the current system operates. Governments create debt, and this debt is used to generate money, thereby perpetuating the cycle. If CBDCs follow the same debt-based model, it necessitates the elimination of existing debt to ensure a smooth transition. Consequently, the transition could result in either hyperinflationary or hyperdeflationary consequences, depending on how the situation is managed. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. Without a doubt, we have to go through a hyperinflationary reset if the CBDC is indeed going to be the new currency because we have to get rid of all of that debt. Now, I have looked and looked to see how they would justify bringing it out. In the current system, they create debt and then that creates the money. So they are, I have read where they're still going to do it debt-based. And if they do, they have to get rid of all of the debt that's out there. So we have to have a either reset. a hyperinflationary, yep. right, yep. or, or hyperdeflationary because they're going to sell it, according to them, they're going to sell it like if you let us have these CBDCs and control it, there will not be any inflation. No, there'll be deflation. Right, which is which is the same thing. It's just the flip side of the coin. Yeah. It, it kind of, it's really going to depend on the level of confidence that people have in the central banks, in the in the currency, in the CBDCs. Right. If they don't have that confidence in them, well, then you're going to see gold go up dramatically. If they can say this is going to fix it, you're not going to likely see that because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. And so physical metals is where you would see it for the physical only market, which is where we're seeing it now. Well, you'll probably see it priced in terms of dollars and priced in terms of CBDCs because the dollar is also going to have to be priced in terms of CBDCs. So the most likely way that it's going to come out is at a one for one ratio and basis. So if you think back to uh, when they went to the euro from the individual currencies, right? Mm -hmm. What they did was they devalued the currency at a certain level first, about 17 yep. percent, telling the public we have to do this so that everybody is is equal and then we can go and make this transition and That's then when they the made that transition oh yeah. totally they, they, oh. this is the same playbook they use over and over again yep and then let's say it was two euros to buy a loaf of bread and it was two lira to buy a loaf of bread so it looks like it's the same because two for two but it took four lira to buy the two euro so then you had a further 50% devaluation. And it was interesting because I was recently in Italy and I was, I have a, a guide friend. I've known him since 2009. That was the last time that I, I was there and, and we had a conversation and we were talking about that transition. And he said, you know, everything got twice as expensive. He said, but I couldn't charge more. The success of CBDCs largely depends on the public's confidence in both central banks and the currency itself. If the public lacks faith in these factors, we might witness a significant surge in the price of gold, indicating a failing currency. On the other hand, if central banks can instill confidence by convincing the public that CBDCs will resolve economic issues, 
We may not observe such drastic fluctuations in gold prices. The IMF has also highlighted the strategy of making the transition appear seamless to maintain a sense of normalcy. Wynet draws parallels to historical currency transitions, such as the shift of the euro. During that transition, currencies were devalued to create an illusion of parity before undergoing further devaluation. This tactic aimed to ease the transition process for the public. She emphasizes that any transition to CBDCs will likely follow a similar path, attempting to minimize disruptions and maintain the facade of stability. And I said, why couldn't you charge more? Everything went up. Mm. And he goes, oh, because people just wouldn't pay it. Wow. So his income went down, and I'm sure a lot of people had that experience. So I think it will look very similar to that, where if they need to make some adjustments, but they're going to probably try not to, because the key is to have you think that nothing has changed. And Nothing Carson's, to see here, move along, everything's fine, right? Exactly. And they've talked about this at the IMF and using the example, well, if you go to the grocery store and you're going to use the CBDC, you won't realize, you won't notice that anything has changed. Well, yeah, they don't want you to know that. I was there in 71 when we shifted from a, at least a quasi gold back currency to a new currency. And I remember President Nixon saying, hey, if you buy goods that are made in the US, you're not gonna notice anything. So just buy US goods, nothing is changing. Well, here we are, we've lost over 97% of the val purchasing power value and we've got debt, <laughs> unpayable debt. Again, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency unless it's loss of confidence. And we're witnessing this, I'm paying really close attention to what is happening in Zimbabwe right now, because they are in process of issuing a gold-backed uh, CBDC that they want people to transact with. Yeah. Last year they came out with a one ounce coin. Well, the wealthy could afford a one ounce coin, but the public couldn't. The only discussion has been to enable BRICS nations to use their own currency to buy from another country. There is no talk of gold yet because they can't do it until the debt gets burned off. I don't care what country you are, as long as you have unpayable debt, how can you go into something new? And this is the people that don't, uh, it's hard for them to understand that you've got to stack now and you've also got to put in place your food, water, energy, security, as well as your barter ability, mm -hmm. wealth preservation, community and shelter. And the time to get it done is now, not when the crisis is unfolding because then it's too late for you to do anything. Looking at Zimbabwe's attempt to issue a gold-backed CBDC, Wynet underscores that countries burdened with unpayable debt cannot embrace new financial systems until they rectify their financial situation. She stresses that holding physical gold grants individuals the ability to preserve wealth and barter when necessary, especially in times of crisis. The rising trend of central banks repatriating their gold is seen as a clear indication of the precarious state of the global economy. As CBDCs gain traction, Wynette predicts a shift towards direct barter, with gold and silver playing a significant role. While some cryptocurrencies have promoted adoption and familiarity with digital currencies, a major crisis could be the catalyst for widespread acceptance and usage of CBDCs. In such times, direct barter with precious metals may offer a measure of financial security and freedom of choice. I'll tell you a new trend that I just found when I, I read a, report, a current report from Invesco. Now, Invesco is not about gold and silver. Invesco is about fiat money, mutual funds and ETFs and all that garbage and bonds and stocks. But they did this whole report and I hadn't seen this from anywhere else yet. And what they discovered or what they reported on is that more and more and more central banks are repatriating their gold. 
Yes. That means they're bringing it home. Damn. They're not holding at the Bank of England mm -hmm. and using it as collateral for trading, which they've been doing for a long time, easy to manipulate. They are bringing it home. What, what is that really telling us? That's telling us how close we are to collapse. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And they know that. And everybody that's listening should know that too. Do you remember when Venezuela asked the Bank of England for its gold back? And what did they say? No. I mean, it took a long time to get it back. Ultimately, they did. Right. But because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And it really doesn't matter what your perception is. Whatever the local currency, whatever that currency is, when you liquidate something, it's going to get it's going to they're going to give you that currency, which if that is the currency that we use to transact, then you have your stacks over here and you liquidate it as you need it. And that's how you protect your freedom and your choices. So, uh, yeah, they are going to do it into whatever the tool of barter is, whether it's CBDCs, dollars or coochie cooch. And there's always a black market. They call it the parallel market because they don't want to say black market. But that's also where you're going to find more truth in valuations. Right. And we've seen that over and over and over again where governments suppress the price of gold and then, but in the black market, it's substantially higher in terms of that currency, mm -hmm. but not as high as its fundamental value because they're taking risk. The black market is taking a risk of buying it and, and using it. So yes, I do think that we're going to see a lot of direct barter with the gold and the silver. They've got to have enough adoption last time I checked and and I mean that's what a lot of these cryptocurrencies were about was getting people comfortable and getting adoption and the last time I checked they had about 16% of the American population that on some level had done something with cryptocurrencies but I think that it what you have to look for is a big crisis a big crisis that will force people they'll they because you can't separate the CBDCs from the, Fred, from the Fed now, but all of a sudden people are scared, they're losing their jobs, there's inflation like crazy, whatever it is, huge crisis, banks are imploding because that ain't over yet, <laughs> right? All the issues that made the ones that we saw implode, that, that's an issue for all of the banks.